Welcome, everybody. We hope you're having a great second day at Lightbox Animation out of Blackhawks. So, are you excited to be here? Yeah. Great, great to be back in person in front of everybody. So, we're thrilled to be here. And thank you for coming to our panel. Um, we are your talent and development teams from Nickelodeon Animation Studio and Paramount Animation, and we're thrilled to present to you today. Um, we are here as the one family. We are here to share with you a little bit about both of our studios, so let's kick it off. Um, I am Camille Eden, and I am VP of Recruitment, Talent Development, and Outreach at Nickelodeon Animation Studio, and I'd like to introduce our panel to you, and then um, we'll dive right in. So right next to me, I have the Yin to my Yang, <laughs> to my Yin, at the Paramount Innovation. We have Nellie Ferrani, who is VP of Palette, and when next to her is the amazing Carrie Kim, who is VP of Animation Development, and next to her is the equally amazing Emily Wardman, who is SVP of Movies at Paramount Animation. So welcome. Wow, or we'd like to have everybody tell, introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about what they do. So we're going to ask you, what do you do? How long have you been at your studio? And to add a fun little twist, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, mine is uh, Wanna Be Bug Spice. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Hi everyone, so excited to be here in person with you all. Um, it's been a great show for us so far. Exhausting, but great. So much great to have out there. Um, so as Kamil said, I'm the VP of Talent uh, at Paramount. Recently, I recruit um, talent for all of our movies. Um, Gashin designing to all the art and illustration, story, edit, and uh, layout. So we're very front and focused. I've been at the studio for a little uh, over three and a half years now. Um, None of you want to hear me carry up in ever. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Carrie Kim. As a reminder, I have been at um, Nickelodeon in this position for um, about three and a half years. Um, but before that, at my second job out of college, I was an exec assistant at Nickelodeon out of New York. So it was, this is my second tour, so I can officially say it's been a really long time. So I really know the big brand. Um, I, um, I, my job, what do I do? I, um, um, my main focus is I oversee originals for big kids. We always call it big kids, but that's 6 to 11. Um, but we also, many of us, there's a lot, raise your hand, we got developed the people here. Check them out, talk to them. Reach out to the, uh, if you guys have questions. Um, but we all um, work on franchise projects and originals projects um, and the shorts program. Um, and the franchise projects that I work on is the, I feel like I'm upset that you guys are getting excited, Avatar. <laughs> Avatar, um, and Garfield, these Garfield people is interviewed. So we're very excited. Um, and I think that covers it. Oh, sorry, go to karaoke song, I Want to Rock with You by Michael Jackson. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily Nordland. I'm, uh, SVP of movies at Paramount Animation, Nickelodeon. I'm just gonna lead with my karaoke song, um, just in case this helps anyone who wants to pitch ideas, you'll sort of know where I'm coming from. Oh my, God, I that. Um, my karaoke song, um, which you're all gonna know I'm want to be your <laughs> <laughs> is um, uh, torn um, by uh, the version presented by Natalie Rubia. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. I heard a lot of applause. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, we hear we hear original ideas. We develop um, existing franchises. We're doing movies for theatrical. We're doing movies for Paramount Plus. We're working with hand-in-hand hand with the series team to figure out how to spin off series into features. So we're doing it all. This is how I feel I'm <laughs> So yes, we are uh, two iconic 
studios and one family entertainment. We'll, we'll dive into that a little bit about how we kind of work across and it's wrong to help our studios bring in new talent, grow talent, share new IP and content. So I'm very, very excited to share with you. Um, so our content is our ecosystem and that's really what drives what we do. Um, I'm going to kick you over to our development teams to talk a little bit about how it all kind of begins with the motion because it really does start with the content. It really does start with the stories and, and the people that we're bringing to tell the story. So um, why don't you take it away and talk a little bit about how, how we begin. Um, you know, it's been really just this amazing, exciting change for us and it's been brought us like so many opportunities. Um, with the, as you guys all know, I mentioned earlier when the kite, for example, Avatar Studios, how perfect that we can now at the same time develop series and movies and in a real partnership um, and cross pollinate artists and content and stories and make sure there's this really amazing synergy um, and really build out this and expand the universe. Look what you guys are, what you know, you see now what we're doing with SpongeBob. Amazing stuff are coming out of it series spinoffs like Patrick, Will Beats, and it really has been this great opportunity because we can actually utilize all of our superpowers and access to it. Uh, yeah, it, it's... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's this whole world has opened up to us now that we've joined because we we can... On original ideas, like Carrie and I, we were both, there was a book that we were looking at and it came to us and rather than developing it as a feature and figuring out what the world was and looked like and then sort of lifting our head and then figuring out how we could partner with the rest of the studio, what we were able to do is develop the idea in tandem with the series team so that we knew that we would have this world to run with. What characters would we want to explore in backstory? What origin stories would be interesting? You know, how could we, you know, leave it open as a cliffhanger so we know that a series could develop on the heels of it? And then we turn to these to you know, Camille and Nelly, and we're able to look at artists across the series team and say, who could come on to the feature side for a little bit of visual exploration and then who could we you know it's it's been this like um yeah this i mean truly amazing partnership but it's been it's allowed us to expand out our, our mission statement to be able to look at different types of material knowing that it could have a home on the network on a streamer or at the movies which is the promise of this whole thing they and it's great because even with originals you think, we, you know, we always talk about originals and franchises, but the originals, the goal is we're expanding it into a franchise. Um, and I, what has been really amazing and collaborative, like she said, with uh, that book property, but even with originals, we could be coming up with a story idea and we can say, you know what, that is super big. That's a big idea. It feels like a movie. Instead of killing it, we can actually go, oh, hold on. Let's pause on that, focus on the series, but put, don't let that go because that could really expand the world on the feature side. It's really, really exciting. And, and we'll dive into the, the talent part of it a little bit more, but what what that creates is this amazing opportunity that allows us to actually work together. And that's something that's so amazing and, and exciting about our studios is that a lot of places will come to and kind of the rope will stop when you've done some project, but because we work together and we have so many different varieties and styles of shows and different content. When people come to our studios, they can work across in so many different um, areas and different types of shows. And it makes it really exciting for Nellie, myself, and the team. And the teams that live in the two of Sam, they would be fun to bring your hands up at our team. It makes it really cute, exciting. I think cartel and, and because it, you know, we're not beholden into one style and, and not just one uh, type of, of show and so that. So um, talking about that and how iconic IP across both studios and it would, uh, Carrie, you mentioned a little bit that A word. <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to shift for like a couple, like dive into maybe a little bit more like a funny follow or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I wish you guys could see our internal eye. <laughs> 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 Um, well, there's, okay, I'm going to try to stay focused on the prompt, which was about the idea across both. Yes. I mean, we're doing, we're, I would say everything that we're doing on the movie side has, like, I guess, candidly, I don't even, put, I'm not even sure I knew exactly what franchise meant before starting this current iteration, because for us it means really sequels, spin-offs, TV shows, toys, things like that. And of course, there's also um, uh, an, there's space for all kinds of ideas within that model. But I think a couple examples, um, Smurfs is one. So we just were we just acquired Smurfs and we're sort of reimagining that brand through a Nickelodeon lens, which I think is to say we're it's a thousand percent being driven by comedy. And we brought on a writer, a theatrical writer called Pam Brady, who comes out of the South Park world. She wrote for the studio. She wrote the South Park movie, Team America, among others. And so it has a really cool, interesting tone. And on the series side, we're in tandem, you know, working on a series of Smurfs that will, you know, sort of, will all work together on kind of like, reimagining this iconic franchise for a new generation of fans. Absolutely. And I think you guys, if you weren't at the panel earlier, Clark Jacobs was a moderator, but Monster High is a perfect example, right? Mm -hmm. We have this amazing animated series, but we have um, the live action movie come out, and then the partnership with Mattel and their toys. So that's been really expanding that. There's going to be, like, we also can't forget about the digital potential, right? Mm -hmm. We have baby shark buds I came some days I'm like we got that song we got the butt and we turned it into a series like and it works and that world is going to be expanding as more and more um and um if you guys don't know but Nikki Lopez the creator of Santiago the Seas is here so that's an amazing story on this like Beautiful, you guys have seen it before, just it is, but she's got toys. There's a digital component to it and this series. And so really just, we have this amazing Nickelodeon grand, it, like really honing in how can we expand it, but also like protect those, those actually story arcs, which has been really important to us, right? Um, and for us on the development, it's been like really, really key for us. Just because the world is expanding doesn't mean you're diluting the creation and the the original intent and theme um, and and goal of that series or movie, and that's super super important for us. Yeah, I already mentioned that. There's a lot of Movies and series, we talked a little bit about that, the movies and series development. And, you know, it's just, we're continuing to grow that. And there's there's so much more to kind of share with you. But just know that it's like really, really exciting. It's a very exciting time drive. So I'm bringing in new creators, new stories, new IP, new content. And that's to help you. So, pitch them to call on one, pitch them to all. Oh, that is true. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been really um, interesting because we now can just make a phone call and we'll get someone to reach out about a pension. We hear, we always ask a lot of questions um, about it, but it's been great because we'll just say, can you come to this meeting because we want to look at this original or this book or this other concept that could that could be really focused for us um, on both sides. Uh, it's a, We also do a lot where, you've done this a couple of times, where you're like, this isn't a movie, but there's something special about it. Can you listen to this person? And there's and it's happened where I've like I don't know when this is, but it's amazing, and we could turn this into a series. Mm -hmm. um, and then we could do. Should we talk a little bit about? Do you guys want to know a little bit about how to pitch to us or what we're looking for? Yes. Like this means and the great. And the very glad that we skipped over this, but we should talk about our development processes because they're different. I think those, because I see you people, I think you want to talk about all this. <laughs> uh, okay, so for um, series, 
Um, I, I don't think we need, we can sort of describe to you what the Nick brand is, but you guys call it Robot Nick, and it honestly hasn't changed, yeah. right? And so, you know, comedy, really having that kids POV, but they don't have to be human. They don't, they still can be adults, right? We, they don't have to be literally kids. Um, we still are targeting for boys and herbals. Um, we do. We don't have a house style. How amazing is that? I hope we hold on to that forever, right? Um, it's a lot of work for Nelby and Camille. <laughs> um, but because of that, we can then really widen the gap. We can do any kind of genre as long as there's that, that comedic intertwine um, for us. So we're we're taking originals. We take franchises. We take books. If there's something that you're interested in, that book, we can always check if it's available, or you can reach out to find if it's available as a lot of books or not. Um, and for series side, um, I think most of you probably may have the desire to pitch or have pitched him for, but we are looking for, you know, what it is. Um, you may have a great nugget of an idea, but we actually want to figure you need to come to think about how it could have been multiple episodes, right? What is that season? And then really the most important is character, character, character. And the world, I know we get caught, a lot of people get caught up in the world and then I get caught up in like, what is this? What is the setting? What is the, you know, I think the most important is the world must serve the character. So you really got to really think about all the character traits um, and their dualities. They have to really feel like they're not just one note. Um, and we love the tone. We want to know about the world. And then you have to practice your elevator pitch. I'm sure you all heard that 50 times. But in 30 seconds, what is your series, not what is your episode? Um, and that's it. We I um, always make jokes is even in we put a project into development, we make an animatic, we make a viola, we do all this biz dev, do a script, um, and we're everybody we do research and everybody approves it, we're still working on that log line, right up to the green light meeting, because the log lines needs to be so tight and say so much. So um, I think the biggest recommendation I can tell like say to you is that it doesn't have to be perfect, right? And um, don't feel like it's your pitch has to be perfect. We love you to practice and, and be ready, but I want you to know that we're always on your side because we need you to. We need you to have a good idea. We need that show to be me with. So no matter what pitch you go into, no matter who that is, if it's us or anyone, they need you just as much as you need them, and we're always on your side. Perfectly put. It's it's. I would say the to add to it on the feature side, on the movie side, it's um, uh, it's it's all of those things about character for sure. And I think, uh, but I think the other question we're going to ask is, what does it mean to you? What what is the theme? What's the universal message that you want us to walk away with? And you know, for us, especially now on the movie side, how do we leave the theater feeling good about ourselves in the world? And because we are making stuff for kids and families, and 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 we want to know what it means to you, so that we can understand what it's meant to mean for the audience. And we want to be with the characters emotionally as they live the lessons that they need to learn through this movie. So. Uh, so that's, I would say, that's the other layer that we're that we're looking for. I'm sure you guys on the series side have a version of that too. And then, like Carrie said, a good clean hook. You know, just what is that sharp, elevated, high concept that we are not going to be able to forget that stands out and differentiates itself from the other movie that might be like it on the surface, but aren't anything like it when you really talk about the specificity of the project. So whether that's in the world building and the atmosphere and the jokes, love jokes, the love and entertaining pitch, you know, um, stuff with visuals can really help, but it certainly doesn't have to include visuals. Um, yeah. 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 And Carrie mentioned um, the fact that we're not beholden to one style, and mm -hmm. some people may find that a challenge, but for the talent, you know, piece of it, it's very liberating to people to look at it so many different styles of talent. Like we can come here and we can look at all the booths and all the artists of the talent. And 
I knew that I never walked with Rampart earlier. Yeah. And yeah, people stop you and ask them, what do you look for in visual development? Or what are you looking for in a, in a character design? Or anything else? Well, everything. Because, you know, across all our movies, everyone has a little different look and feel and style. You know, we're doing 2D creating hybrids, so they like action and staging hybrids. Um, then we're also working on the on and series and, and streaming. And so we really are looking for a little bit of everything, just in just really exciting. And even with Tiny Shepherd in stop motion, so. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and it's been, look, it's a place where you can do 2D animation, CG animation, stop motion, and hybrid mm-hmm. animation. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really exciting. And I think one other unique thing about our studios is that usually with a lot of companies, when you're recruiting talent, you're kind of just in the production phase of it, right? But we get to work with the development teams, and this is like one of the great things for about our studios. Of like recruitment comes in very early, and we're working with them on projects and development. So we're we're all always looking for new talent and new shows and ideas. And you know, we can email Carrie or um, Emily and say like, Hey, we met this great artist, so we just ran into this director, and you should take them to him. Again, very, very unique for, for, for our studios, and, and we're always loving for how we end up mm-hmm. so. Yeah. And what about John? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of you are here to hear about the job. So we talked a little bit about that just now, kind of leading into our slides. But again, um, you know, we look for everything. And we look for anything. We look for at all levels of production. Um, One thing you should know about both of our studios is that we do outsource the majority of our production work. So animation, like those types of roles, the production roles, tend to be outsourced outsourced for all of our projects. But we are always looking for like that, the front end talent, so we're the people that are and then we hire for a story, so we create split talk right into visual development, concept with the straight up characters, like art, essentially, cross the board. Um, we hire um, editors, some lead editor, first assist, second assist, associates, um, and then a uh, camera blocking layout. So layout creep is rough layout, essentially. Um, and then we'll team up with a vendor partner for aspiration animation to the final product. And obviously production looks at that, some producers, such so producers, PNs, five suits, um, coordinators and PAs for we're looking across the and that's, that's our model. <coughs> Can't forget production management. Because without production management, you can have show her about it. Cool. Give your props to your production people. Everyone is always looking for production. Always. Always. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, we have our website. So it was before, like, how do I get in touch with you? Always go to our, our website. We have nickanimation.com. Uh, and paravanimation.com. Okay. And we, we look at everything, we really do go through everything. We look at all talent, because it's almost like no stone left unturned. And yeah, and also, you know, we, we share talent across studios. So when we done, um, if someone is maybe be a fit for us, it's that we might reach out to Melly, we might reach out to the Paramount teams, and vice versa. So we like to create a, a shareable talent pool because just because someone isn't a fit for one type of show doesn't mean we're not fit for our students. And because we have so many projects going on and so much work, we are actually able to share your work with all of our shows. And we've created kind of a, a, a different approach to uh, talent acquisition and recruitment in that we kind of gather the talent and we look at the talent. We actually to bring that talent directly to our shows. We meet our shows on a weekly basis. We also have meetings with our development teams on a regular basis, and whenever we do get new talent, we're always able to share that talent out. And also internally, when our people finish on our shows, we also have a system in place where we're able to internally share that talent with other shows because there might be another show that might need a story or has a certain uh, style or visual development artist. And again, we can share that across our our studio. So very very. And nice to work with all these people. Hey, on the, on the feature side as well, so we can you know nobody to call up our producers, like at once rolled off their films over the next six months. What films we have going up, where we took on in the bank, would work fast, and they will also shake up us with the Nick team as well. And sometimes, <laughs> sorry, opportunities come across both sides. They, they want the same person that we may want in the feature, 
And at that point, we really get that candidate the opportunity to take what they want to what works this for them. And that's not mm -hmm. recently. And it's, 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 it's kind of great to be able to do that. And for us being kind of a, you know, production, um, the hiring model, a freelance hiring model, and kind of the marriage board on this movie, but so often, you know, people roll from one to the next to the next, and you know there's the wonderful, you know, the component and vice versa. We've had coordinators from it up to Paramount for on film. And so it's, it's really, really exciting. And, um, you know, we have such great talent now tied to our studios together. You know, Ramsey Maidick took come for and this is our leader and has been um, over the last couple of years. And with that change, you know, there's been just, again, so much opportunity to even become this powerhouse, you know, parallel pictures as this iconic film studio and make, you know, obviously this iconic um, kids and family brand and so together it's going to attract some of the best of the best out there. And, and so we look for that high level seasoned talent, but then we're also now bringing in, you know, young um, or just, just, you know, maybe less experienced talent with this fresher perspective, I think, great to what we're working on um, and mentored by some of the best out there. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and with the great, you know, with the Grammy and the team she's put together under Paramount and Nickelodeon, we also have a lot of um, early career opportunities. We have an internship program. Um, we have our communities team, Parsons Smith, the Runs community. He was here earlier on panel, and we have programs that reach out even into elementary. He does programs for elementary school um, students all the way through high school who are interested in careers in, in animation, but haven't really not have the accessibility to that. So we work with a lot of other organizations. We work with some of our friends at Latin X in animation, Vivian Animation, and Isaac Animation and you know, film school, and we branch out into a lot of different, uh, with a lot of different organizations to pipeline that talent into some of our great career programs. And you need to writer's program, the yeah. artist program as well, the writer's program, mm -hmm. artist program. And I have to say, you know, I've, I've been around for a little bit, and um, what, I, what amazes me personally about being at points to be able to see like Nikki's a great example of someone kicking as an intern and is now has her own show and, and you know a lot of times at, at places where you want to be a writer um, it's a long road to go from like a PA or a script coordinator to get to that but there are people who go down from being coordinators to being in writing when they're writing on shows and and it's amazing sorry to tutor on home but I just love it I mean I think it's really able to see <laughs> I also, you mentioned this, Camille, but I got, I just want to highlight how important it is how you guys have done the way of you, like, getting to know and collecting all the knowledge of these potential artists is, even if you apply to one show and you don't get it, don't, don't be di too disappointed because there's going to be another opportunity around the bed because it's not like they check you off and delete your stuff, right? <laughs> they're, they're then going, okay, it may not be the right fit, but maybe there's this other thing that could be different and a better fit. And so... Um, it could, it, you're, you're never forgot. Yeah. And I think one thing is, is, you know, we have a lot of different styles and we have a lot of different shows and um, IP and content, but it, we are still a Verena, right? We are still an ability and animation, Paramount animation, right? But no, when you do go, my tip for everybody who is a uh, job seeking is do know and understand the brand that you're applying to because we have our own brand. But we're not Disney, right? We're not Pixar, we're not Wonder Brothers, we're not. So when you're applying, it is a key, key for you to know your brand and make sure whatever you're pitching or the portfolio um, adheres to what the brand is. There's a lot of fluidity in there, but again, you know, just do your research and do your homework before you apply because that in and of itself is one of the key things that will help your work get, you know, come up to the top. We talked about hiring the best a little bit. Anything else you want to add? I don't believe that. We love to hire the best. On the theatrical side, we have um, six movies right now in production, which is and three that were very recently prevalent and we're stepping up on. So we are looking um, definitely again more on that front end, but. Um, Working on the source with uh, Chris Miller, who's a director of yeah. We just signed on a pretty fabulous uh, production designer, Max Boas, who's joining us. Um, we're working on a small little movie called Avatar, 
out, which is really <laughs> exciting. Um, and at that we have folders, and then there's another one that we can't quite say yet, but we'll be something up. So it's good. It's good time to prepare. And in the April, we've got some new to go for those of you who are making. But they are. I don't know. Yeah, I know. They're like, oh. Monster High, and if you were. So, Monster High, you know, we were hiring for Monster High. We've got all of our students, we've got our SpongeBob universe. Um, we have our uh, preschool shows that we hire for. Um, and again, there's so, so, so much going on. And um, we have our booth. If you guys haven't visited our booth, so do stop by our booth because we do have our, our talent teams there. They're there to meet with you. We have a schedule up in our booth so you can kind of see what times, and we're here all through the, uh, the end of the conference. So do stop by and check out and meet our folks. Um, we're here for you, as Carrie said earlier, and we want to meet you, and we definitely want to, you know, hopefully have you apply to our studio under Joe. Uh, <laughs> keep, keep going, okay. So now we have time, I think, for some questions. No. Do we have any questions? Can you come on up to the uh, to the mic and using a light right at a pier if you're comfortable to do that? Yes, sir. Oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, I was just wondering because I'm like on the post end, or mm -hmm. yeah, that side, and I was just wondering uh, what advice do you have for someone who's like trying to apply and share their real and all that stuff? What? So are you, when you say post, what type of position are you looking for? Lighting and compositing. Okay. So we, we do have lighting and compositing roles at our studio. Um, depending on, on, you know, what level you're at, if you're early career, um, we do have our artists and writers program, which is a great way to get into it. If you are early career, if you have some experience behind you, then, you know, again, as I said earlier, make sure that you tailor your reel um, or whatever you're going to show to our studio. We're not a visual effects house, right? We're not a gaming studio. So if you look at our content and our, um, I'm assuming it's interesting, right? I'm positive it's 3D work. Yeah. So you probably want to apply to some of our 3D shows and, you know, not to copy the style, but make sure that you have enough variety so that we can see that you can adapt your lighting skills to our shows. Okay. I mean, for us, you know, again, we're, we're mostly looking at front end, but we work with our vendor partners and then share work we get that we think, you know, as they're kind of on the back end. But um, I fall in here with Melissa, her strong work on, um, you know, uh, less is war, I think, you know. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I was wondering, um, how do you get the opportunity to pitch something? Um, I think we're, we're not, um, if you would like to pitch stuff, we can give, the, um, I mean, decide, we didn't talk about this, trying to build people. Um, we can give you guys some beans uh, if you want to pitch, but one of the most important things are um, if you are not represented at like, uh, we always hear the word unsolicited, if you do not have a rep, then you have to sign a submission to these form. Uh, and we advise not to come up with ideas that are spin-offs of our legacy properties because you don't know what's happening, you should ask about that. Um, but I think the best thing, if you have not met us yet or anything, is to do it general, is set up a time with Olivia or Ray or Clark. Uh, I would say Nikki, but you're very busy. So. <laughs> She had like, a week out and I mean, he was like, but she, um, but ask, they like set up and say, what are you looking for? Ask all the questions that you need so that you can come back and do a formal pitch. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. It was really great, guys. I liked it. Um, something that Camille was saying was about um, if we were applying on the talent, like the front end side, we did not understand the brand. But I think for a lot of us, um, like really graduated people who are just kind of trying to get our foot in the door anywhere. It's like, I don't want to be like, I'm only applying to Nick, right? We're trying to like, just go broad. So do you have any tips for like how to 
still be towards your brand without like just drawing SpongeBob or something. You know what I mean? Like just being broad but still applying for everything. Yeah, that's, that's a great. No, it's a yeah. great question, and especially for people coming right out of school or you are early career. Um, you can. There's something called focus versatility. <laughs> so it, it's um, sometimes people are coming and they have a lot of different skill sets. That's a good thing. Um, sometimes it, some studios they want you to do one thing, but if you if you have skills in a lot of different areas, my personal advice would be is to create a website. And on a website, you can kind of categorize all of the different things you do, but focus on your strongest uh, skill sets. And in that, show versatility in your style. Um, you know, one example, if you're a board artist, we're gonna be really looking for your storytelling capabilities in your board art. So have some, uh, so we're kids in fairness, so comedy, heard all the same comedy. So maybe what you wanna do is have like, here's my comedy section, and then here's my action book, and like here's my dramatic word. And you can do that across your, your skill set, whether there were even like effects is out, right? It can have, you can story, tell your story of all of the different disciplines but just have enough versatility so that we can see that you can adapt that skill to a lot of different types of shows. And some people think they may have to apply just 2D work or CG work, but because we have both types, don't be shy about putting your 2D work or your CG work. And then something else that can help early career talent is have a drawing synthesis, right? Depending on what, again, what it is. like. Even if you're a lighter or a model, modeler, we still like to see your drawing uh, samples because at the end of the day, a lot of these disciplines are based on your artistic skills and your aesthetic. Um, and you know, it's not about copying SpongeBob, but we want to see what you can bring to the table. We're looking for your storytelling. We're looking to for your drawing skills. We're looking for your aesthetic. You know, do you have humor? Do you have action? Do you have comedy? Do you have drama? And, I'm um, like that though, what you're saying, on the feature side, we're not, it's not often that we're kind of announcing what we're recruiting for. And mm -hmm. so um, I think having, you know, versatility is, is super important in seeing, you know, range and work. But again, and it's been said, but if, these, if I see something and I see some great work, but it's not quite right for the current movie I'm wearing for, I'll tag it and save it because I'll know I'll need to go back and look, you know, at that person in the future. So. Um, but I think it's a little kind of our end, um, but because you, again, you can't really tailor to what you're not quite sure, but seeing some range is always really helpful. Um, and then, you know, as you know, for early career, if you apply and as you know, you build your portfolio out and you add more, you know, share again, you know, um, uh, it's, it's, it's always good. And we do try to go through as much as we can and, and look and so, yeah, I think that's, that's it's the point is, is, is all updating and growing and adding more. And we have our programs, we have those early career programs and we're building out a few more to hopefully be able to pipeline in more talent. Um, also take advantage of, take advantage of things. You're here, we showed up, so we're, you know, well done. Um, and also take advantage of the, the different organizations that are here at this conference because they are here to partner with um, us and you to help you get in. Like again, this mentoring program, Latinx, like they have programs, they have where you know you they have workshops, they have like all those kinds of things are set up to help you succeed in the industry, help you be with people, get portfolio reviews and feedback and notes and tips. Um, all the, the the things that are happening at conferences like this are are there to help guide you. Just to add one thing too, I think because we get on the um, hiring side of things, oftentimes Camille or Nelly will send us, I mean, everything from someone's personal Instagram to a fully drawn out website. A lot of times we're looking on the feature side, is there a wit to it, you know, for the big comedy stuff? Is there a beauty to it for sure and your personal aesthetic and your style? But the other thing we're focused on, I'd say, is camera. And I think that's true on the storyboarding side, on the art side, can you move the camera around? Are you, is there a sense of scope and cinema? Does it feel like something that would feel, you know, is it a piece of work or is it a scene that we're looking at that would feel worthy of kind of the big screen and theatrical format? So something to keep in mind. 
That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Sam Pardon. I'm a stay for intern in Nickelodeon. Hello, <laughs> it's a pleasure to see a bunch of the Nickelodeon here again, but I just wanted to ask a kind of important question that I've been uh, meaning to ask. When uh, applying to a job at Nickelodeon, normally you might go on like the Paragon or Nickelodeon website for that, and it's, it's just part of plotting for a role like that, but are there other people I should be reaching out to other than just a recruiter as well? Because I have just wondered about that. Who would those people normally be? So we do take all of our submissions through the website. It makes it easier for us to be able to kind of track where people are coming from. Sometimes we, we do get a lot of referrals as well. We get a lot of intern referrals from our artists on our shows. We get referrals from uh, other people at other studios. So when we get those referrals, we usually will follow up and reach out. But we always send those back to apply on our site because it like I said, it allows us to get your information, it allows us to track you in our system, get you into our system, and then that way we can share you with our shows. Um, again, just like the, the you like it for you, that you're here and you showed up, so we have a, so kind of need us, so we can remember you. You know, mentioned if you are like influence. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, it's turning with Satyab of the Seas last year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fantastic. I mean, and, and we probably will have some folks that you already know at this studio. Yeah. So that's really, really helpful. And it's great that you interned. So fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for answering your question. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Hello, my name is Kat. Um, I was super curious if either team ever considered um, or have done already a utilizing motion capture of virtual production in any of your current animation workflows. Yes, um, I talked a lot about the movies. Well, quickly, we did. We're 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 very um, interested in it. We've done a couple pilots um, exploring that. Um, we are. Um, we are using the Unreal Engine in a series right now, but not using motion capture, but using the Unreal Real Engine in a unique way, which is very cool because it's a different style of boarding, but you still actually have to board with what we need for the show, which I can tell you about a good stuff about. <laughs> um, and you want to talk about the movie? You should talk about it. Yeah, we, we, we love, when we can use motion capture, we do. And I'm sure we'd love to do more of it. It's, and it's especially helpful with certain types of work on the movies, big choreographed scenes, big action stuff. Sometimes it can help us sort of move through our process with you know, rough layout on our side in a more efficient way. But it also can get really like specific and nuanced body performances. So it's, it can be a really, really, really useful tool to us. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you can give also tips about non-artist jobs. Are they gonna hire at the same process? Could <laughs> like if you outsource a lot of work, so if you might need a translator or HR job, or are those kind of things through the same website and same kind of resume, or do they have a different step? Yeah, we have those uh, jobs also on our website um, for if it's more of a studio kind of role, like if it's HR or, or something like that, and probably more on, for us, on like Paramount Pictures, kind of a global website, but um, there's also production opportunities, you know, and to get your foot on board and coming in as a PA, there's so much exposure you're going to get to filmmaking and work with, again, the director and the producer and the production center and head of story. So, there are so many different pathways, and it's not art, or maybe you're an aspiring artist, but you know, maybe not quite there to want to get in, start as a PA, get your foot in the door, and you make so many connections, meet so many people, and again, we're always hiring PAs, comics on the cross all over, all of the series too, I'm sure. And, and then there is definitely, you know, an upward, you know, um, you can you grow within that. Um, our PAs, you know, if they tend to want to stay on the production side, then move to coordinators. And after you know, being on a movie or for two as a coordinator, supervisor, and again, those are different levels. So there are definitely different opportunities there. It's actually a really great question because people forget 
all of the other rules that help support series and movies. When you watch those credits, you're like, why are there five minutes of credits? It's like all the people <laughs> that it takes to get these projects out. And there's tons of opportunities that are not artistic. We've got finance, we have business and legal affairs, we have public. I don't know. <laughs> it's like on and on, like all the technology roles, right? Um, and so our teams handle more of the artistic and the production management roles. But on our sites, um, we also will list out, you know, oh my gosh, production finance, like that's a thing. And we need production finance people. So, you know, if you're great at that and you love movies, it's like get into production finance. So many other types of roles. So those are listed on the Paramount site and you can go and look for those types of roles. Um, and others just like, again, look at the credits and look at the jobs that are listed in the credits. And all those are working jobs and entertainment that we have. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Oh, that's my voice. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, hi, I'm DK Delson. First of all, I want to say thank you for being here today. Um, I graduated from Cal Arts, and I just remember that we, you know, we had a big memorial towards Stephen Hillenburg uh, mm -hmm. when he had passed away. So uh, just hearing that the SpongeBob universe is continuing brought a lot of joy to me because uh, SpongeBob brought a lot of joy to me when it's heard about. Uh, my question is: I think I, I feel like I've heard a lot about the Nickelodeon side in terms of what the genre you're looking for. And I've been a big fan of Avatar myself, and it has inspired me to create a particular series that I feel might be on the, the Paramount side of things. So I'm just wanting to get a little clarification. Is, is there a differentiation of genre and what you're looking for in terms of shows on that side? Or both sides, really? Yeah, I still so I think that's actually a really great question because we didn't clarify that. So we are like kids and family. And I know we have Paramount Animation and Nickelodeon Animation Studio, but our roles are like Emily oversees movies, and so, and that movies for Paramount Plus, for Linear, for Theatrical. And so my, my role is Big Kids 6 to 11 series for Linear, for Paramount. So we're thinking about the brand mm -hmm. and that show that would work with the brand and where it lives is secondary, actually, because it's actually going to go everywhere. It will go on Linear and it will go on Paramount Plus. Right. So if you have a series that is like not similar but inspired by Avatar, it would still you wouldn't have to be focused on if it goes out Paramount or, or Nickelodeon channel. You would just need to think: Is that it? Does it match with the Nick brand? Oh, yeah. Is there a comedic lens with it? Is there a great character art? All that stuff. that helps. Does that help? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you and I think that's a great question to ask because we we always keep saying is know your audience. So in your head you're thinking, am I making this show? Do I take the show for Nickelodeon or do I tweak it for Paramount? Plus, it's the same thing. Right, and and I totally understand that. I have a a show that I'm pitching to on um, all black television in the next in the next month. But I'm like, but the show that I have, I know is for. That universe, but yeah. you know, in terms of through breaking into the animation world and uh, breaking this work to hire all these great people over there, and over there too. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, emphasize on that. And um, yeah, no, that's that's and you're doing it the smart way, so that's the thing. Uh, broccoli. Yes. I stopped. I fell on the pot. Um, my name is Amy Williams. I go to Laguna College of Art and Design. And I was had a question for like, are the original scenes for edges? I'm currently in a class of a lot of original scenes taught by a Christian daughter. She kind of said, ah, uh, Nickelodeon as well. And I was wondering. She's what, awesome. She's a show of development. Yeah. And like, I love her as a teacher. I had a like, like, directed core thesis and I have a for this class. And she just, She's just like a ray of sunshine. I know. Her, with her, and like whenever she can get Tom Nizzle into the class, it's like, it's so great to go down. But my question was, um, are you guys doing like possible like mock pitches at the Nickelodeon booth? Possible, let's say that again. Like a mock pitch? Like, oh. if I were to like pre pitch or something? Because I'm currently working on my original series, and so far it's going pretty good, but I'm like, 
uh, towards the end of the semester, we have to give like an actual pitch, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, I have to like practice on it, you know? Yeah, we that's a good idea. We should think about that next year. We don't have that plans now. Uh, in the writers program, they do that. In the artist program, they do these. Clues. They they teach you how to do those sessions. Um, there, when and any of these other amazing organizations also do those as well. And I think you have Chris and Kyle, and that's yeah. amazing. I know. So they're going to. That's really good for you. They're going to give you some awesome people. Who knows? Cool. It's actually a great idea of and you know, kind of bringing that forward. I mean, yeah. so maybe it's something we can do in the future. That would be really cool. I will. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Oh, no. I was saying you also brought, I think, another really important idea to the table, too, which is as young creators who are working on original stuff, any environment you can be in where you get some practice getting notes and receiving notes and learning, you know, your own, how you would think about those, how you would address them. Oftentimes when we give notes, it's more about the idea than the execution. And so really, but it's also, it can be, you know, it can be an emotional process for people who are getting notes on their work sometimes for the first time. And so how to work with, you know, how to work with people on that level is something that I think a peer group or any, you know, any sort of a setting where you can practice that skill, I think, would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. I have to like, send a question. Ah, oh, really good to know. Anyway, um, do you guys give feedback or like contact back people who apply to the artist program, or to uh, if you've applied to the artist program? So we have our artists and writers team in the booth. Mm-hmm. Uh, during they're here for like. They're right now. They're right. They're right. I don't know if they're here right, right now, but oh, okay. if we're here today, they'll be back tomorrow. Okay. But they do provide feedback um, okay. to the folks who come from them that they work with. And it's an amazing program. If you haven't checked it out, um, they just, I think, finished the uh, submission, then they've gone through the review. So mm-hmm. for this year, I know that they, they've already made the, at least the, they're into the finalist portion of it. Mm-hmm. But do keep an eye out. I think they start their um, posting is to by August, it's August. Yeah, so end of uh, July to August. Yeah, and then September. So keep an eye out for when they, they do the next round for the, the, the program. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for your time. Hello, my name is Alexis, and my question is, um, I know you mentioned the websites um, in terms of looking for jobs, but is there other places that we could kind of um, look up, like social media or um, just anything just to um, keep track of like opportunities. Yeah, but the Fairmount are the colonial. It's a really great question. We do, we do post out on uh, social media, so we're on LinkedIn, we're on uh, Twitter, we're on uh, Facebook. Or... <laughs> we have our, our social feeds that we will, we'll also share tips on um, on our, our social feeds sometimes, like especially if we're looking for a specific role or discipline, we definitely take advantage of, of social media. Sometimes our, our recruiters will post out on their LinkedIn, like what we're looking for. So to keep an eye on our social feeds and um, and, and follow it because we see that we are like it. Uh, you know, then that's a good time to apply. <laughs> And this is just sort of like a fun question, but what's your guys' favorite like I show or um, movie from either one? If you have a favorite one, um, not just what's on display, if nothing like that's in the works, but do you guys have like a favorite show or going on or? We'll have to go through really fast because we want to get the yeah, real question. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, for me. I have been re like I started re watching SpongeBob with my daughter from like the very beginning and we've had a blast. Like, yeah, and SpongeBob for me too. Okay. Same. Yeah, I'm the same. Excuse I'm my like torn by, by Natalie <laughs> Wiffer here. <laughs> I think I tried. So you're going to have to sing that at the end. Well, thank you. I think that's cool. Thank you. This is obviously his own for a last question. Thank you. Hello, I'm Eric. Um, I have a question. I'm, I'm very interested in, in the 2D animation as, as well as 3D animation. And my question is, in production, do you ever see them interchangeable? Depend, does it depend on what the story is that 2D would be more suited for it versus 3D? 
is there a, any pipeline issues between 2D, 3D, and some hybrid? Or this, in this day and age, does it not matter? It's up to your artist's artistic vision. Yeah, I, we the the medium is obviously a super important consideration when we go to take a project to green light, and and whether or not something is two D or CG is often what do, what does the movie need and what is the audience going to get the most excited about. And then I would say most of our films have some component of mixed media. So whether it's live action or like you said, stop motion, puppets, 2D certainly, especially, you know, SpongeBob World is known for it, kind of, you know, jumping between things. But it's, um, it's something we put a lot of thought into and then, you know, create a team around, you know, that, that specific medium, that specific genre. And for a series, we let the the content be. So we think that story is going to be best fit as a squash up stretch to be. Um, we think that we're that spoiled in the middle because we can kind of try both. So if we're torn or the creator's torn, that we can explore to both ways to see what will be best formatted for it. Um, and we're, we're lucky that we can do that. Thank you. That's a great question. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.